These are my top 8 things to do in the city of Osaka, Japan. Osaka has a reputation of being a bit more gritty than Tokyo. It's a place with a very unique culture, feel, and of course, a strong love for food. So that's why I'm starting off with a place that totally captures all these characteristics. No, it's not Dokonbori. We are talking about number one being the neighborhood Shinsekai. Located in the south area of Osaka, the name Shinsekai literally translates into New World. That's because it was originally constructed around 1912 with the original intention of being an ultra-modern entertainment district inspired by the likes of metropolises of New York and Paris. The ironic thing is, today, which is more than 100 years later, this area feels distinctly Japanese, and to Japanese people in particular, it has a very nostalgic and retro feel. The whole district almost feels like a carnival, being so visually engaging and overwhelming with plenty of lights, statues, and floats. It's a perfect place to come for nighttime too if you're into nighttime photography. The main food to eat in Shinsekai is kushikatsu, which is essentially just a skewer of fried meats or vegetables, which definitely feels like fair food. There are countless shops selling kushikatsu in Shinsekai, but the one I personally went to was Tengu, which was really cool because I was able to eat my kushikatsu at a sort of open counter area with lots of locals around drinking some beer. What a jolly fun time. Other points of interest are the iconic Tsutenkaku Tower, which is actually modeled to be like the Eiffel Tower, right in the middle of the district, and the countless statues of Biliken, who is actually the god of things as they ought to be. Believe it or not, there's actually more to say about this unmissable neighborhood, but I will actually get into that later on this list. So number two is to visit the Osaka Castle. This is actually the first castle I've ever seen or visited in Japan, and it did not disappoint. Located in a bit in the northeast of Osaka, the Osaka Castle is another iconic site that millions of people visit each year. The castle itself is absolutely gorgeous, colored white, black, gold, and sort of a soft green, while standing at an impressive 55 meters tall, which is about like 160, 170 feet for those Americans out there. There is also a large area surrounding the castle itself that's a park consisting of a moat, which is really cool to see. You have a Japanese style garden, a shrine in the area, and plenty of other spots for you to explore. You can also pay to enter the inside of the castle if you want, which gives a pretty good view of the city, but for the actual interior, it's more of like a touristic museum than an actual authentic interior of a castle. So if that's what you're expecting, maybe you should skip out on that part. But it's still definitely worth coming to see it from the outside and to enjoy the surrounding area as well. Next on my list is something that is six syllables long and very satisfying to say, but even more satisfying to eat, which is okonomiyaki, or okonomiyaki. These savory Japanese pancakes are arguably the most popular and famous food from Osaka, so eating them in Osaka is a must. What's even better is that if you have dietary restrictions, such as myself, there are numerous restaurants and places throughout Osaka where you can get some really delicious okonomiyaki as well. Again, Osaka is famous for its food. It is actually known as the kitchen of Japan. So be sure to chow down on as many okonomiyaki pancakes as you can and wash them down with a cold and refreshing kirin or asahi beer. Number four, we're getting a little bit cultural. This is to visit the Namba Yasaka Shrine. Now, I visited countless shrines throughout my time in Japan, but this one definitely stands out from the rest. To cut to the chase, the Namba Yasaka Shrine is worth a visit because of the massive lion head statue present. It's very visually gripping because it is a whopping 12 meters tall, which is 36 feet, which might not sound like it's that tall compared to the Osaka Castle, but once you're standing in front of it, it definitely will make an impression on you. It has a wide open mouth with teeth, and sort of a little dance ritual area, but the mouth itself is thought to swallow evil spirits and bring good luck. The rest of the shrine is pretty peaceful and quiet and a nice place to escape the hustle and bustle of Osaka, but for me, what I'll always remember is of course that massive lion head statue.
Now number five was something I almost didn't put in the video because it's totally overrated. No, I'm kidding. It is Dotonbori. This downtown neighborhood is in the heart of Osaka. When everyone thinks of Osaka, this is the area and sites that come to your mind, probably. Similar to Shinsekai, Dotonbori is just totally sensory overload with so many sights and smells and sounds galore. The area and district of Dotonbori actually runs along the Dotonbori River, thus giving it the name Dotonbori. Be sure to spend some time on the Ebisu Bridge, taking all the sights of the beautiful neon signs around you, such as the Asaki sign, and of course, another iconic site in Osaka, the Glico Running Man, which is actually a running man from the company Glico, which is famous for making Paki, among many other things. Now here's a pro tip. To see a cool hidden gem and to escape a little bit of the commotion, head down this really beautiful and mysterious alley where you eventually will reach Hozenji Temple, which is a Buddhist temple that at first might not seem like it's that much, but it's really beautiful with lots of lit lanterns at night, and there's even a moss covered statue where you can yourself throw water on to keep the moss growing. It has a really interesting history, which I talk about more in my Osaka travel series. So check those out if you want to hear more. All in all, the takeaway from Dotonbori is it is a must visit at night. Definitely not overrated in any way, shape, or form. Number six is a really convenient option because it's located just to the north of Dotonbori, which is Shinsaibashi Suji. This is another iconic area in Osaka, and this is essentially a Shotengai, which is just a shopping arcade or shopping street with a roof overhead. So it's actually a really great thing to do on a rainy day, or if you are just a shopaholic. There are many places to window shop or buy some merchandise or clothes, but one of the places that stood out the most to me was the Shonen Jump Store and Pokemon Center because I'm a huge nerd, I'm not gonna lie. Many of you probably are if you're going to Japan too. So no matter what your interest is, it's definitely worthwhile to do some window shopping or just walk around and go through Shinsaibashi Suji in Osaka. Number seven is a total change of pace, which is Round One Stadium. Now whether you are a man, woman, or man-child, like me, Round 1 in Osaka has you covered. Round 1 Stadium is an 11, yes, 11 floor entertainment center. Each floor has a different thing to offer, including things like sports, mini golf, soccer, ping pong, basketball, Japanese style arcades, which if you didn't know are the best arcades in the entire world, I'm convinced, a karaoke area, which again, Japanese karaoke, is, you're seeing a theme here? It's one of the best in the world, in my opinion. So much fun, you have a private room where you can have a totally great time. You can do everything here, guys. It really is the ultimate place to have a good night out. We only did karaoke and the arcades. We had such a blast and it made for an unforgettable night in Osaka. I definitely could come back here every day of the week and have a completely different experience, but equally as fun. Number eight is actually a little bit similar, which is to visit some retro arcades and play some retro video games. In case you haven't been able to tell so far, Osaka is a city that definitely has a retro nostalgic feel, where it almost makes you feel like you're walking around in the 80s or 90s or just in a totally alternate universe where you're living in a cyberpunk world. That's why, to totally embrace this, I recommend you visit some retro arcades or play some retro games. My first place I recommend is an arcade called Zarigani, which is actually back in the Shinsekai district. That might actually have two of these arcades. The one I visited had multiple floors filled with these old arcade games from the 80s and 90s, and I actually didn't play any. I probably should have, I regret it a little bit, but just walking throughout this arcade center made me feel like I was transported back in time. It was so cool to see all these machines with some different games that I recognized to some I've never seen before in my life. And I believe it only costs 100 yen to play a game, which, is that a good deal? Probably depends on how much time you spend there. My other recommendation is actually really close to Dotonbori, which is the PC and retro bar space station. Being exactly as it sounds, this is a bar that has retro games and has a space station sort of feel to it. Here they have a variety of different systems and games and the shop owner, the bar owner, is super friendly and got us situated to play some really fun games to end our night. So if you can take away anything from this video, it's that I, you should subscribe to my channel. No, 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 no. It's that surely, you need to soak up the retro and nostalgia present in Osaka whenever possible because for me, this is what made it a distinctly unique and wonderful city to explore and experience. So that is the video, everybody. It is, of course, by no means everything to do in Osaka. I only spent two or three days there, so my time was limited, but I would recommend all of these things to anybody to have an amazing experience in this wonderful, unique, very charming, but very gritty city. So what do you think? 
Have you done any of these things before? Are any of these on your list for your trip to Japan coming up? Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching everybody and check out the rest of my Japan travel series for food to eat, things to do in Kyoto, and everything else. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.